Konnichiwa. Welcome to a Japanese apartment. What's the first thing you think you'll see? It's a genkan. So a genkan is basically a place for you to take off your shoes and store them like this. You'll see them in all houses and apartments in Japan because shoes are a massive no-no in Japanese houses. So don't forget to take them off first. And in typical Japanese style, our genkan has a few useful features that you never knew you needed until you had them. It's also where most people keep their essential go bags for when there's an emergency like an earthquake or a typhoon, and ours is full of all of the essentials. And normally we store our bikes and our skateboards here too. So that's the entrance, but what's next? Kitchen? Living room? Nope, not for us, we have stairs. But apart from that weird quirk, I'd say our apartment's pretty normal. It's not like one of those boxy apartments that you sometimes find in Tokyo. It's a one LDK living room, dining room, kitchen, and it's around 50 square meters. But that just makes it harder to decorate. Okay, so at the top, we have this little area. What do you think is behind the doors? This one. So this area is our kind of body washing clothes area. We have this top loading washing machine. We have our little vanity area. <laughs> you don't need to pay attention to this really cheap broken hairdryer. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit weird, but something I find kind of exciting about this apartment is our multifunctioning tap. So it pulls out like a shower and you can choose your spray level too. Anyway, moving on. Under the sink, we have this little toiletry cupboard, but it's kind of dirty, so you don't really need to see that. And then... Our shower area! So, in Japan, these small baths are really common, and before getting in for a soak, people wash themselves in the shower area first. Although the bath looks pretty tiny, it fills really deeply, and it's pretty normal for parents to get in with their kids too. And as expected from the land of the hot springs, Japan has everything for the bath. A tap, shower head, and that baby. So that thing is basically a remote controlled auto bath filler upper. So you can change the water temperature with it. You can choose how long your bath stays hot for, the water level so you can be eco-friendly, and you can even check the time. This button runs your bath for you, and who even knew that was a thing? This is the reheating function. So when you've fallen asleep and forgotten all about your bath, you can just warm it back up again. This button literally says reserve, so you can just time when your bath runs. This one adds extra water, and this one makes it cooler. And finally, the button you probably don't want to press, aka the big red button, is the emergency call button. Now don't get me wrong, the police aren't gonna come knocking down your door if you press it, but this baby is a lifesaver if you slip over or forget your towel. I don't know about you, but I think this bath might be more intelligent than I am. Bye-bye. So, back outside, what's behind door number two? This! <laughs> okay, so care to explain how the toilet of the future works now? This says Oshiri, so it's a fountain for your butt, and the bidet for your front butt, and the all-important stop button, and the water pressure level. And there is an option for a big or a small flush depending on what number you're doing. And another pretty cool feature, the water that you wash your hands with gets recycled to flush the toilet. Clean. Wait, 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 this is our living room. Okay, so first let's have a look at our kitchen area. <laughs> of course, we have the all-important ramen making equipment. This cool thing where you can dry your dishes by slotting them in there. And finally, our hob. And probably the most Japanese thing in our whole house, the fish grill. These are a common feature in Japanese apartments and houses. And we have a mini oven since we don't have a big one, a microwave, and our fridge with some private stuff, and this pretty cool device where we keep our beers and other essentials. Next, this absolutely massive sofa. I've never had a sofa this big in my life. <laughs> so when we have guests over, sometimes they'll sleep here or on a futon on the ground. Yeah. So leading on from our sofa area, we have this mysterious door. So this is our drying area. In Japan, it's quite common to have balconies to dry your clothes, but we have this little fan that helps to dry our clothes. So we just hang them out on here and up here. And then something that's really important for your life in Japan is this thing. So we have these huge water bottles. We have lots and lots of water, radios, gas, toilet stuff and some snacks inside here. So this is another emergency supply kit, just in case. 
Okay, so the final part of our apartment tour is our kind of Japanese fusion area. So we have a little Japanese floor lamp and our Western style floor to our Japanese floor. This is you, this is me. And we have these cute little floor chairs that's so very Japanese style, so you can just sit here like this and eat. And we have this antique tans chest of drawers where we keep our camera stuff and also our gaming stuff. Our one piece collection and finally one more wall scroll which I bought because they represent us and little baby turtle mochi. Then we have this area, plant, graveyard, lots of failed attempts at having a garden. And then, Final exciting bit of technology, you can even run the bath from here too. What, you might ask, is this? Oh, oh, mochi. Hi, mochi. So that's the end of our apartment tour. Chani. Chani. <laughs>